What is up guys and welcome back to a brand new video today and in today's video I'm going to be taking you through a low budget Google Ads testing strategy to make sure you're not spending money unnecessarily and essentially not wasting money right from the beginning. Now just before we jump into this I will leave links to my Twitter and Instagram down below. I have had a few queries already regarding Google Ads account management. I can do that for you so if you need me to dive in and take a look at your Google account or grow it for you please just drop me a message on Instagram or Twitter. I will get back to you very, very quickly. And also please drop a like down below. Now this is gonna be a very straightforward video and something you should definitely be taking on board. I've had a lot of people already ask me about low budget testing strategies. So that is why I'm making this video. Obviously I haven't used a low budget testing strategy for at least a year now. Please bear that in mind because I've been doing my stores at scale using Performance Max campaigns. We all have to start somewhere and I'm gonna be showing you this campaign you can see on the screen now is one of my UK campaigns that I started in November of 2020 and this was a standard shopping campaign. This data you see here is from mid-November up till the end of the year of 2020 and you can see I got a six rise which is really good at a £5.46 cost per purchase so this was extremely profitable and this was using the low budget strategy I'm going to be teaching you in this video. Now if you guys hop into the campaign creation screen here we want to click sales again and obviously have purchase as your uh, objective for this campaign. Hit shopping. Now you might get this pop up, you might not, but you don't wanna be using Pmax for this strategy because Pmax will likely rinse your budget and obviously the aim here is to not do that. You wanna be bidding and getting those clicks for people who are very likely to purchase. And if you scroll down a little bit more, you guys wanna be selecting standard shopping rather than smart shopping. Now depending on when you're watching this, smart shopping probably won't be a thing anymore in one to two months. I believe it's September, they're completely discontinuing that. But nonetheless, we don't want that anyway. We want standard shopping. Now for the campaign name, we'll just put standard manual shopping because we are going to be using a manual CPC bidding strategy here. On the additional settings, you don't need to worry about that. So if you scroll down to the bidding and budget section, you guys want to be selecting manual CPC. Now I have tested all of these before with standard shopping and the way I started was just manual CPC and I unticked enhanced CPC because we want that extra bit of control. Now you might think enhanced CPC is a good thing to have because it essentially is Google going out of their way and outside your budget to show your ads to people who are more likely to convert. I personally have never seen an improvement with results with having this on. Now in terms of budget, this is entirely up to you because it is a low budget strategy. I'm just gonna go at 20 pounds a day. I believe I started around 30 or 40, but 20 pounds or 20 dollars will be absolutely fine for this. Campaign priority you can leave as low and search network for this particular campaign. I usually leave it on in some others, but as it is a very low budget testing strategy and we want to be showing on the best networks possible, i.e. the Google Shopping Network, we wanna leave this unticked like that. Make sure you're selecting your countries correctly. Obviously here is United Kingdom. Start and end dates don't really matter. Ad group name, I usually just leave as ad group one. Now your cost per click here is something that you're gonna set on a product level in a minute. I'll show you how to do that. So I just always put a maximum bid of one pound, but then you can set your max CPC limit per product in a minute and I'll show you how to do that. So once you've done this, hit click create campaign. I'm obviously not gonna do it because I don't need it, but I'll hop back into my other standard shopping campaign to show you how to filter out your bids and stuff like that. Okay, now the other campaign I showed you at the start of the video was a one product campaign, but for the purpose of this video and this tutorial, I've switched to a bucket campaign. So this was my other standard shopping testing campaign for the UK site and it had all my other products in it. So if you guys go onto this screen here, you wanna be clicking product groups and this is how you split your products so you can set the max CPC per product. So once you're on the product group tab, you can see for me, I've got all these products here. I'm obviously gonna blur out the Shopify IDs, but your screen will probably look something like this. It will just have all products and this little circle here will be green. Now this step's very important because you want to be setting your max CPC bids per product rather than a whole for all your products combined. You wanna click, you wanna just hover over here, you wanna click this pen here and it will take you to this screen right here. Now, now I know it's a mess, but I am gonna to have to blur these out because they are my product names, but you wanna click this box here and then you wanna click item ID. Now to start with, if you are a new user, you will want to select just all of these products. You wanna test all your products in Google. Just make sure this box is ticked and it will say up here how many products are selected. And once you've done that, you wanna click continue to edit bids. Now you can do it on this screen or you can do it on the next screen. I personally like to do it on the next screen. So hit save and then it will look something like this on your product group level. You'll see the Shopify product ID 
Um, obviously, I'm going to blur it out like I keep saying, but if you hover over the ID, it will tell you on the little pop-up box what product it is. And then in this column here, you can see the max CPC. You can set the bid for the product on this level. And this essentially means if you set the max CPC for the first product as uh, like I have 15p, you're not going to pay more than 15p for a click for this product. Now, you might be wondering what on earth do I set my max CPC at? This is where the Google Keyword Planner comes into play. So if you hit tools at the top here and then go to Keyword Planner, I'm just gonna open it in a new tab and I'm just gonna do a quick example so you guys know what to set your bids at. And essentially the goal here is to set a very low bid so you are only capturing the longer search terms and the, and the search terms that have more intent rather than the broader terms which will essentially rinse your budget. And having a lower bid means you're gonna get those more precise clicks, which hopefully the goal is that are more likely to convert on your website as well. Now, if we think of a product here, let's have a look around. Let's do, I've got a tower fan next to me. So I've got a tower fan in my office. Let's say you're selling a tower fan. Now these probably have quite a high cost per click. Wow, not too bad actually. So United Kingdom, Obviously, if you're advertising in the US, make sure you change your location on the Keyword Planner to USA, but I've searched Tower Fan. Now that you can see, the lower range bid is around 23p here. We want to be bidding on the low range for all of the products with this testing strategy, so it's not gonna be rinsing your budget and it is gonna be getting those very precise clicks for the less broad search terms. Because broad search terms doesn't always mean the person is likely to convert. Whereas the goal of bidding low here is to get fewer clicks, but those clicks will be more likely to convert. And then as you scale, you can increase your max CPC, but that is a completely different video. The purpose of this is just to get you set up with your testing campaign. So make sure you use the Google Keyword Planner. And if this was me, I would be bidding around 24, 25p. I usually go one or two p over the minimum bid rather than setting it exactly as that. So you'd go through each of your products, you'd search them in Google Keyword Planner, and then you'd go back onto your Google Ads account and then just change the bids here. So let's say this product here is a tower fan. I would just change that to, I said 25 or 24p is what I'd set it as. And then you just hit save and then that is your max CPC for that product. Now with this strategy, it might be a slow burner, but again, the purpose of this is to not waste your money. Because a lot of people I've had message me already saying they're on a small budget, Performance Max or Smart Shopping is just rinsing their budgets. You don't have to jump in at the deep end with Pmax campaigns or Smart Shopping. This is how I started with Google Ads. I started with Standard Shopping using this exact strategy and it is very simple as you can see here. And as your campaign grows, as it starts to spend, you can do other things like managing your keywords, excluding keywords you don't want to be shown for, excluding search terms you don't want to be shown for. And as you spend more, you'll be able to optimize this campaign further. You will eventually hit a ceiling where you can't seem to scale further, that is when you transition over to, to Performance Max or Smart Shopping if it's still a thing. But guys, I hope you found this video useful. It's a shorter video than usual, but it is a very good beginner's guide and strategy if you are just starting out on Google Ads. If you need me to take a look at your account, just drop me a message on Instagram or Twitter. I do run a Google Ads agency with my business partner as well. So if you'd prefer us to take over your Google account and grow it for you, please just drop me a message and we'll look into that for you as well. Any other videos you want to see, drop a comment down below. Other than that, that is it for me today. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.